Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to incorporate the AISC 360 Direct Analysis Method into your steel design workflow in RAM Structural System. According to Section C2 of the AISC 360, the required strength of your steel structure shall be determined using an elastic analysis that considers a second order analysis the consideration of initial system imperfections, and adjustments to the stiffness of members that are contributing to the stability of the structure. Now in this particular video, we are going to walk you through the workflow in RAM frame for incorporating the consideration of your initial system imperfections. Now if I were to take a look at the AISC 360 section C 2.2, I would note that the code allows me two different options for incorporating the initial system imperfections. I could either directly model those imperfections into my structural analysis model, or I can create notional loads to apply a fraction of the gravity loads in the horizontal direction. For this particular model, I'm gonna show you how to generate notional loads in RAM frame so that you can satisfy this section of the AISC 360. We will now turn our attention to the RAM frame analysis mode within RAM structural system and we're going to take a look at how you can generate your notional loads in accordance with the AISC 360 direct analysis method. The first thing we're going to take a look at is how the gravity loads are calculated since notional loads represent a fraction of the gravity loads being applied horizontally. To gain information on that, let's go to the loads menu item and select gravity loads. Now the gravity load data is shown in this dialog. These values will be based on the applied gravity loads defined in the RAM modeler including the self-weight of members and slabs if those options are selected in your model criteria. For each diaphragm, RAM frame has automatically calculated the total dead load, the live load, and either the roof or snow load, depending upon, again, your criteria. Now, what we're gonna notice is that all of the gravity loads are being associated with a particular diaphragm. And if you do have any gravity loads that are located outside the perimeter of the diaphragm, the program may need some information about where to send this load for it to be included in your notional load calculations. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here I can see I do have some gravity load located outside the basement diaphragm. So I have the option of where to send this load to. So I typically would go ahead and send it to the floor above. Basically, for this particular model, it's representing any of the members that are outside the diaphragm, the self-weight of those columns at the canopy area. Now, I'm going to go ahead and choose the calculated values to be included in the calculation for notional loads, but you do have an option to use your own specified values. When you do this, you're going to see all of your fields are going to become editable, and you can customize them as needed. Now at this point, let's go ahead and click OK, and now we are ready to generate our notional loads. To do that, you're going to go to your Loads menu bar item and select Load Cases. Here I'm going to select the Notional Load option and give it a label. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and select the AISC 360. This is a steel design standard I'm using throughout my design. Once I do that, let's go ahead and click Add. Now, I have the option of indicating what fraction of gravity loads shall be included in the calculation of my notional loads. And my options are 0.002, or basically 0.2% of those loads applied horizontally, or 3%. Now if we took a look at the AISC 360, I could enter a fraction of gravity load as 0.2% if I was doing an iterative calculation 
for the tau factor. Or if I want to set my tau factor equal to 1.0, the code allows me to go with 0.3%. I'm going to go ahead and use that method for this example. I'm going to also instruct the program to apply the notion of loads in both the global x and y directions. These are your horizontal axes in RAM structural system. I'm also going to tell the program to include the dead load, live load, and snow load. Finally, as with any type of lateral load within RAM frame, I would need to generate additional load cases if I had any tension-only members. This particular model does not contain tension-only members, so I'll go ahead and leave this checkbox off. At this point, I can click OK, and I would see my notional loads have been generated. Now there's one last step I want to take a look at. I went with 0.3% of the gravity loads shall be applied horizontally as my notional load factor. With that, what I also want to make sure is that the tau factor has been set to 1.0 to be consistent with everything the code is asking of me. To do that, let's go to the criteria menu and select the general option. Here I have the option to use the AISC360 direct analysis method. I'm telling the program to reduce the stiffness for steel members, that I'm setting my tau factor equal to 1.0. At this point, I feel comfortable that I have incorporated all the requirements for notional loads as specified by the AISC 360. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.